Welcome back to another session of Air Engine Research. Uh, today I want to go over some comments and some questions that I've gotten over the past few weeks uh, about Air Engine and uh, some of the parts and how it works and air pressures and volumes and so on. Uh, also, we're at the point where I need to get more volume of air at higher pressures in order to really see how much air is going to be needed to operate the uh, air engine and at what those pressures are. <clears throat> in a minute, I'd like to go over some comparisons on uh, storage tanks uh, to show you how they compare with each other as far as volume and how long they would last while being used on, the, on an air motor. Uh, but first, I want to make some comments about the air motor itself. Um, I guess the first thing is that uh, as I was designing and building the air engine, air motor, I wanted to try to make it as uh, simple as possible. So it would be uh, easy to work on. Uh, it would be, you know, less weight, uh, more compact, and... Uh, also, I've tried to make it as maintenance-free as possible. I've used sealed bearings and uh, things are out in the open. Uh, so it's, it's easy to work on. Uh, some of the things, like a, a cylinder, if you would have to replace a cylinder or a piston, you don't have to do very much in order to take a cylinder off. Just maybe remove four bolts, which is right out in the open. And um, that way you can work on it pretty easy yourself. Uh, it was also commented that maybe I could use some parts from older cars or something maybe from the junkyard. But every part is unique to the air engine as it's designed. And trying to use something that is already there just won't work. It won't. Um, I guess the next thing is that uh, it's taken me several years to get the air engine at the point where it's at now, you know, as far as being, I think, completed. Uh, but I am going to have to build a, a new engine in order to be able to use it in my truck. Uh, the base on the existing one is not large enough. I just kind of stuck some things on it to make the cylinders in the right position. So it needs to have a, a little larger base. And there's some extra pieces on there now that, that I don't need. And some other items that will make the air engine more efficient and more reliable. Um, so it shouldn't take very long to to redo a, a new one since I know what I need and what size they have to be and the dimensions and, and all. So hopefully that won't take too long. Uh, right now, I'd like to go over some uh, comparisons on pressure tanks and the amount of air that they have in them and, and what the pressures are and how long they'll last when, when they're used. I've got uh, three different uh, spreadsheet samples to, to show you with. Um, originally, they were all on one sheet, but when I tried to put them on this video, they weren't, they weren't clear enough. You couldn't see what they said, so I had to separate them. But uh, the first one is using a paintball storage cylinder. Now, the, there's, there's three cylinders on the engine. The stroke is 1.23 inches, and the piston diameter is uh, about one and three-eighths inches. And the, the stroke then would be 1.2 inches. And when you use Q 
cubic inches in all three cylinders, it's 3.68 cubic inches of air for each complete rotation of the engine. Now, paintball storage cylinder, the, you know, the tank dimensions you see there are 9.4, the length is 52 inches, and cubic inches inside the cylinder is 3,606. Tank pressure, 4,500. So cubic inches is the same as what the inside is at that pressure. Now when you reduce the air pressure that's going to be used in the engine to 200, that gives you 81,154 cubic inches of air. So when you run it at say 200 PSI, you're gonna end up with miles that you can go is about 11 miles. And then the comparison on the next one would be on carbon fiber tanks. The dimensions and everything is the same as what it was on the other example. It's still 3.68 cubic inches per rotation. But the carbon fiber tank, they give it in gallons so it, it would hold 25 gallons of water. And the total cubic inches is 5,775. The tank pressure there is gonna be 6,000 PSI. And the total cubic inches again is the same, 5,775. But the cubic inches in the uh, thing when you run it at 200 PSI would be 173,250, which is quite a bit more. And that would end up giving you miles down on the lower right, about 23 miles for one tank. And then the next one is based on a scuba air tank. Now this engine is based on a uh, car engine. There was one of the subscribers said that he is trying to use a regular car engine and just make it to where you can use it as a compressed air motor. So the scuba tank has got 3,000 PSI and the tank volume is 1,205. Now when you convert that down to 200 you've got 18,086 cubic inches. Now, if you look straight up at the top on the right, you see cubic inches per rotation for a four cylinder motor is 143 cubic inches per rotation. Now, when you look down at the lower right, that'll only give you 0.06 miles that you can go on that full tank of air at 3,000 PSI, or you can go 333 feet and you've run out of air. So a scuba tank is, is not going to be very practical for, for running an engine. Even if you would run it on my uh, air engine, the three cylinder two plate engine, you uh, still would not get, but just about the same as you get with this, um, well, actually it would be 330 cubic. Oops, that's the wrong one, sorry about that. The paintball storage, you get 11 miles from that, so it's not quite as bad, but still, you just don't get the, the mileage we're trying to get. So it's gonna to have to be a carbon fiber tank in order to, to get any, any kind of mileage at all. And then I'm actually gonna be basing it on using four of them. So in all, I think we should end up with maybe 125, 100 to 125 miles per four tanks. Now, that's gonna bring me back to the next thing. 
carbon ta carbon fiber tanks are not cheap. Uh, and I've managed up to this point so far to pay my way as I build these things, you know, over time, so it's not such a big expense. But what's needed now is going to be expensive. I need four composite 6,000 PSI tanks, and those four tanks would cost approximately $20,000. A four-stage compressor to refill those tanks is going to cost approximately twelve dollars to $13,000. So you can see that uh, even if I get the things worked all completely out, it's going to be very expensive. Um, I've still got some more things that I want to work on yet. The, uh, the valves, I, I still have some different ideas for that. The pressure regulator, I still have to do uh, more with that. And also I'm thinking of possibly making a smaller version of the air motor so that I could use it on a motorcycle and possibly then use two, maybe three scuba driver tanks like a lot of people are suggesting because then I wouldn't need near as much air because of it being a smaller vehicle and smaller engine and I could also run it with a higher gear ratio because of the weight difference. But uh, that's something that's going to come a little bit later on. And the questions that I've had about the other air, I hope the previous little video part explained, you know, how I come up with these calculations and why the tank would have to be so large. So. Until I come up with a little bit more, I'm going to just have to wait a while yet. I've had some health problems that kept me from working on it, but hopefully this fall I'll be able to get back to it again. So until uh, that time, I hope you'll check back in from time to time and see if there's any new videos. So thanks again for checking in, and see you soon.